to my friends. There was a little group of us, about three of us, in Ballsbridge, and I was the alpha male. I uh, concocted all the uh, devilry that was going on. I was the leader of the group, uh, and uh, I noticed that my friends were taking a un very unhealthy interest in young women. And I warned them about it. I said, you know, this isn't good. God didn't mean that, <laughs> and so on. And then I realized gradually that I was the odd one out. So they knew I was gay. But uh, I told my mother when I was about 20. She didn't pay that much attention to it. In those days, homosexuality wasn't mentioned in the newspapers. Um, uh, there was no discussion of sexuality at all. Um, and uh, most people of my generation had the impression that they were the only one. Uh, and so there was a lot of isolation in that way. First of all, there were no gay organizations. The sexual liberation consisted of about ten of us. Nine of us were gay and one of them was a question mark. I spent our whole time uh, talking about contraception and all this kind of stuff, which was absolutely irrelevant to us. And I said, look, this is nonsense. We are gay, we're Irish, we're a political movement. So I started the Irish Gay Rights Movement then. There are organizations like the National Gay Federation, like Outhouse and all this kind of stuff, uh, that uh, supports gay people. There's a telephone counselling service. Uh, there are groups all over Ireland. There's a Garda Liaison Office. Uh, all these sort of things. There were none of these supports whatever in my day. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No whit of an organisation. I'm a great supporter of uh, Belong To. I think they do very good work in trying to stop bullying of young people in schools, for example, which still goes on. Yeah, and that's, that's a problem. I think very early on when I came out, which is 1992, um, my uh, parents, for instance, um, felt, okay, they would help me get uh, fixed, I suppose, or cured. Um, but at the time I was married with children and obviously my partner at the time was struggled with the idea. There's quite a big difference now um, since I came out. And when I came out, obviously, it was prior to decriminalisation of homosexuality. Uh, the trans community was much uh, more in the shadows. There was very few visible trans people. Um, over the years, as I started to kind of get more confident and come out myself, things became much better. But I think by the time it got to about 2005, 2006, things really improved. Um, and then obviously with the introduction of Tenny starting, there were much more positive uh, you know, role models out there and people who were willing to be public, um, both in the media, but also just in general society, that you could come across trans people much more easily. And I think for me, that I felt was very important for me to be able to do that as well, having come out very early on. When I came out initially, uh, which again, as I say, was around 1992, there were no other trans people around me. Um, very quickly though, I started to socialise on a, on a uh, trans scene, which is predominantly cross-dressing scene, but it was a, still a trans scene. There was a lot of transsexuals, to use the word, an old word people used to use. Um, you know, there were still some there, and obviously I got to meet other people like myself and understand how they were kind of navigating life. I, th I think there is still an awful lot more to do. I think for the LGBT community in general, there's still a lot more uh, issues to be dealt with, such as you know societal acceptance. Although we, uh, you know, got marriage equality back in 2015, everybody assumes our oh, well, life is going to be different. It's, that's not the way it is. I think for the trans community, however, we're still that little bit further behind. Um, you know, there's quite a still a number of pieces of work that has to be done specifically around gender recognition for non-binary people for under 16s. Um, there's still issues around hate crime, no different to other areas of society. But also I think the big one is education for, for trans people. Education for society to understand who we are, uh, what we're about, what it means to be trans. And also then for trans people to be able to just take a step up and into society take their rightful place in society. So I came out because I was kind of getting bullied in school for being gay. Um, I wasn't out though. Um, and I just decided if I came out with myself, maybe it would be a bit easier. And it actually was when I came out, everything kind of got a bit better. But I came out, my parents were kind of like, yeah, we know. And then um, 
I think friends and stuff knew as well and were kind of a bit supportive but then there was I was in school about 15 years ago so it was a bit different than it is now it was it was tougher so it was um it was it was pretty tough but my friends and family propped me up I was pretty scared of admitting to myself even I was gay because to me the word gay meant a bad thing because in school it was used to describe shit situations so if you got a load of homework that you didn't like that's gay if your lunch was minging that day that's gay uh, if you're you know if the rugby team lost that was real gay so why would I want to associate myself with this negative thing and um, so it was pretty tough yeah I, I always soundboard my kind of uh, uh, thoughts uh, uh, on my niece and nephew who are in secondary school at the moment and like they have friends who are pansexual, they have friends who are non-binary um, and there's no real issues in the, in the school that they're in so I think it's, it's gotten a lot better. I think there's way more we can do, like I always think it's all about pulling someone up beneath you and I think there's a lot to do with trans people um, and they need a lot of rights and as a, a white gay man I feel quite at ease with myself and quite accepted but I think there's plenty more we can do for the rest of the you know the LGBT kind of uh, alphabet. I'm a big believer in the power of one person and um, it can it can take one person to break it and one person to make it I feel. I remember there was one guy who bullied me quite consistently in school. He was kind of obsessed with kind of thinking up new ways of making my life shite. <laughs> um, and I remember one day he was trying to pass this note around the class with a survey saying how gay is James. And then he went to pass it back and some guy who I'm now friends with stopped it. Um, and I remember that was the first time anyone had stood up for me. Um, and I just remember feeling like, wow, there's nice people in the world. And my whole perspective changed from that day on. So I always say to people who are getting bullied or people who aren't getting bullied, there's going to be bullies forever until the world ends. But the people who can really make a difference are the people who stand up for people. So if you notice anyone kind of getting a bit of a hard time or whatever, ask them are they okay, stand up for them if you see something bad happening because it made such a difference on my life, it could make a massive difference on theirs. My friends are fine with it, you know, they're my age so they're kind of just like Okay, cool. Like a lot of them were shocked, like, because I'm like a really girly girl, so they're kind of like, what? <laughs> but yeah, no, my friends are fine. My family, I was really lucky. They were great. Um, I only came out to my mom like first, so like me and her got really close after it, because like we obviously had this huge talk. She was so great with it. Like it's one of my favorite memories now. But she took it so well. She kind of helped me come out to the rest of my family. Then it's pretty great to see like more and more people are becoming okay with it like you get surprised sometimes with people's reactions like my granny my aunt who live next door they were um like so anti like gay marriage everything they were handing out the leaflets like the vote note everything and i'm um, like when they found out it was like a switch just flicked and they were like they realized that like gay people are just like normal people like they know that they love me and i'm gay now so they're like oh okay we actually don't want gay people now as a kid there was no like gay role models really when I was growing up so like it took me a while to realise things about myself because like I didn't have anything to like compare it to or whatever. Um, I think yeah normalising it just making it become something that people are used to and not like a shocking thing that it is now kind of. For a while like it was like a huge thing that like I didn't want anyone to know like especially in school like it was just like this huge secret that I had that I didn't want anyone to know. Um, but like the day that I did come out to my mum, like it was like this overwhelming feeling of like, I just have to say it, like you can't contain it any longer. Um, but no, like I didn't feel wrong coming out. Like I just felt like it was something that had to be done and like I could finally get on with the rest of my life then after doing it. I was kicked out of McDonald's once for like holding a girl's hand. Like we were eating food at the table, like we were customers. And like we were literally just holding hands on the table and the security guard was like, oh, you can't do that here. This is like a restaurant. Like he was like telling us we're making people uncomfortable. Like no one else was uncomfortable. Everyone was just doing their own thing. Um, so that's like the only really big thing. Um, I've been shouted dyke at me in Stevens Green, but like me and my girlfriend, we just laughed because like we were like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but um, yeah, like nothing really that bad has actually happened to me. I've been very lucky so far. 
so I was never really fully bullied but I mean people say things but um, so it was always kind of this negative connotation with that whole side of it side of life or whatever so I kind of pushed it down for ages but then once I um, kind of realized that this is an okay thing I, I just kind of accepted it and once I started telling one person once like me and my best friend Oshin told each other it was kind of a lot easier obviously there is a long way to go there's still a lot of pl uh, places in Ireland that are um, not as accepting as Dublin I think we kind of live in a bubble in Dublin where it's like very very liberal but um, there is a lot of rural places that aren't the same so there is a long way to go still people need to be recognized in schools because there's young kids in schools that think they're the only person that feels like this and um, I think it would do so so much good if they were thought about it and told that like there is other people like you as well and obviously the suicide rate for LGBT in the LGBT community in Ireland is, is high so like that would definitely help because people wouldn't feel as alone and things like that in schools I think definitely one thing that has really helped me throughout accepting myself and my like queer identity I think has been definitely my friends like surrounding myself with people that are in the LGBT community and like um, exposing myself to the culture and really being educated about it is something that has really made me proud of being gay and proud to be part of this community. My friends when I first came out were chill like they were chill they were like yeah we know. <laughs> My mother, um, she was she was okay with it. Like she thought I was a lesbian to begin with, so she was she was prepared for something like that. My dad, however, um, I my mother came out to him for me whilst I was abroad on a scout camp for two weeks, so I didn't have to deal with that. And um, it, that happened two years ago, and he's only really starting to support me in the last couple of months. So. Ireland is doing really good in the right, like doing really good at the moment. We just launched an LGBTI youth strategy, and um, with well, marriage equality, 2015, the Gender Recognition Act, also in 2015. They're reviewing the act now. The report came out, and now let's go through the all. Right now, schools need to change a lot because. I go to a single sex secondary school. It's the biggest one in Ireland, and my school are great. However, others are not as great as my school. And I've had friends come out in other schools and I had to fight for the rights to wear trousers or to wear a skirt or to even be called their name and correct pronouns. So um, schools really need some, like, need to kick up their stuff and support trans young people. So letting us wear a uniform that corresponds to our gender, letting us be called our names, letting us be referred to by our pronouns. Um, not many people are fond of trans people. Um, I can see that from Facebook comments on things related to trans people and like things related to LGBT things. You just, you see lots of hate, especially from people from older generations. Still people, LGBT people don't feel comfortable walking down the street holding the hand of their partner because the fear of being like assaulted or shouted at. Like I've been assaulted and shouted at, shouted, shouted at for being a trans young person on the streets of Dublin. We don't have like my age, I'm 17, there is no health care for me in this country. People under 16, they get shipped abroad to Tavistock in the UK to receive health care. People over 18, you're waiting two years to see an endocrinologist to get on hormones and he has the power to say, no, I don't think you're trans enough. So it's really, it's not great here at the moment, but like trying to transition and for 16 and 17 year olds, if you want to get your gender recognized by law, you have to get a psychologist to say you're trans, an endocrinologist to say you're trans your GP to say you're trans, they need to get the courts to say you're trans. And then from there, you can get gender recognition. I think just really surround yourself with people that accept you and be positive about it because I know it seems like a bad thing at the moment, but it is a really, it's part of you and you should accept yourself. But I would just say that um, even when we have everything fixed in this country, we have to remember that the majority of countries throughout the globe still persecute gay people and we can't forget them 
you know, we have to keep raising those issues for, for them and for young people. I mean, difficult enough coming out in Ireland, uh, but imagine what it's like in some place like Iran or uh, Africa or Putin's ghastly Russia. It, it, like, it always gets better. Like, it really always gets better. And come out to kind of people you trust first, and then it just gets easier. It's like a snowball effect.